Hello, everybody. Guess what? I know, I know, I know. It, it happens once a week, Monday nights. It's uh, Disputed Lands uh, on Take On The World TV. My name is Chad Schaefer. We've got a good friend uh, many of you know and love tonight. So you know what to do. Go get your cup of coffee, find your comfy chair, maybe a favorite blanket. Sit back and relax and uh, join us for tonight's show. It's going to be another good one. Well, just because you have an understanding of the Bible in your head doesn't necessarily mean that you have Jesus in your heart. Ooh. Get right, get, get inside, inside, get, get hungry, hungry. Word, I've got an appetite. appetite. Everlasting water, never again thirsty. To disputed lands, take a journey. You are listening to Chad Schaefer on Disputed Lands. Thomas Dunn. I got some introductions here and things to do. First, I want to let everybody know who's been watching the show. I told you last week that this week I'd probably be doing the... We're going to do the study and the deep dive. We're going to go from cover to cover in my book. I've never done it before. I've never gone through the whole book with anybody. I've done tons of interviews and talked about it. I've done presentations on it, but never a page by page, front to back study through the book so that people can read and learn along with me. Many of you guys have placed your orders and uh, in my zeal thinking I'm going to start this week. Uh, sometimes I do. I got ahead of myself. It's like, wait a second. <laughs> if people are ordering the books this week and I do the show next week, I haven't even shipped the books off for them to have it in front of them while we're going through the study. It would be nice if those people had it. Now, I placed my order because I had a, a handful of books here. I didn't really think that the, the turnout or the interest uh, of people still needing a copy of the book would be so great. I figured everybody who watches the show already had it, right? Well, I was wrong. Uh, you guys have been great, and there have been many people who placed an order for the book. So I was like, oh man. So I'm in uh, fast forward mode. I'm like, okay, I got to get an order in. I got to get an order in. It takes two or three days, right? Uh, usually, maybe a week to get them from uh, KDP Publishing, who prints my books. So order it, and they say estimated arrival date is two weeks out first uh, the end of the week of may i'm like oh my goodness i'm gonna have to put this off until until the middle of may before we can even start doing the study now i gotta rearrange the whole schedule and i still thought that until my order of the books was sitting on my porch when i got up from taking a little nap this afternoon so I'm going to be able to ship those books out tomorrow, and that means that we'll be able to have the show do going through the book starting next week, because I fully intend that uh, most of those books are not going to take more than five days, unless you, you live to the southern tip of California, because uh, I'm shipping from Indiana. Unless you live out there, it shouldn't take more than five days to get there. And if you're living in the southern tip of California, I'm sorry, you're just going to have to catch up to the book because I'm not waiting another week to do the study. And I still love you, but uh, that's just the way it is. Uh, raise your hand if you're in southern California. Um, but today, today, <laughs> you guys know I, 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 I'm nostalgic. I like to reminisce. Today, I have my good friend, and he is my good friend. Uh, somebody I know I can call uh, if I got to lay out my heart and I know it's going to be held in trust and I'm going to get the best wise feedback that Tom Dunn can muster. Uh, he's going to tell me that and he's going to get back to me and he'll hold it in confidence. And I know that I can get wisdom from him. Um, we're the same age. Tom just turned 49. Uh, when, when Tom? Last week. Last week. I turned that same age, 49, uh, in August. And so we are the same age. Uh, we see eye to eye on many things. We, uh, kids, uh, family, we, we 
uh, he lives in Ohio. I live in Indiana. So we're Midwestern people. He, he was born and kind of raised in Northern Kentucky, I think, but I, you know, moved to Ohio. I'm in Indiana. We're Midwestern boys is what I'm getting around to. So we grew up in the same culture and things. Tom and I get along really, really well. And before we get into the interview uh, tonight, Tom, I got to share something with you that my wife shared with me uh, when I told her I uh, was going to have a guest, you as my guest on tonight. So take on the world uh, last conference. Uh, we had that really small foyer, right? Where we were jammed in. You got there late uh, because you were trying to, you were sleeping in your car uh, running in your car on the side of the road from one conference to get to our conference uh, on the same weekend, uh, being the trip you were. You got, you got, uh, your table was right over there in front of where the door was for the conference area, right? And we were all crammed, not a lot of room. My wife is uh, come to this conference and she's sitting there at my table or she's standing up at the table and she says she's looking in um either that closet area or into the conference and she she saw something she said she saw some hair and then a flash of like only appeared to be one eyeball and she was staring at it and staring at it and all of a sudden <laughs> she realizes <laughs> It's Tom Dunn who was standing in the dark and comes walking out. And my wife says she felt so awkward. <laughs> she, knows she was like staring at him for like five minutes trying to figure out what it was she was looking at. And so if Tom saw her staring at her because she was in where the light was, just know my wife was not weird. She couldn't figure out what she was looking at. That's hilarious. You know, I don't remember. I don't remember that day, just except for I was I was excited to be there. My daughter was speaking, but I was also trying to get ready because I was speaking that night. Right. And yeah, um, all is um, I'm not worried about anybody, uh, <laughs> any weirdos. We're all weirdos, really, but uh, for even being there. Um, but um, no, uh, we, you know, take on the world. The last one, I was so happy to be back at that because it had been, you know, we got shut down the year before yeah. and we didn't know two years ago, you know, before that, that that would be the last time, you know, uh, that we would get to see each other. For a while. Yeah. And, you know, you and I, I, it was also special for me in my friendship with you in that um, you, you like me, I like right before I get to go on to speak, I like to take just a few moments, uh, some little more, a little less sometimes to just go be my, by myself before I go on stage, just so I make sure that I have my heart and my mind and everything, you know, ready to go. I'm, when I get up on the stage, I'm ready to speak or whatever. But I had the privilege this time. I ran into you before you were going up. And I, you said, hey, uh, pray for me uh, before we can. You want to pray for me before I go up there and speak? I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> the privilege of getting to pray for uh, Tom Dunn before he goes to speak? I mean, you'd have to be a fool to turn that down. Um, you know, my good friend. So. You know, my first my first experience of seeing Tom Dunn before he goes up on stage, though, is <laughs> it was quite funny. You know, everybody has their computers and the laptops uh, with their presentations on it. No, Tom Dunn thinks he's going to be Mr. Uh, Tom Bionic or something. He comes in with his presentation on his Apple Watch or whatever, and it gets messed up. And he can't get it to work. Uh, he finally, they get the slides over so that they'll appear on the screen. <laughs> For those of you who weren't there. But the problem was, <laughs> poor Tom, none of them <laughs> were in order. <laughs> and he didn't know which slide was coming next. <laughs> so he would go to the next slide. And then he would have to think about where he was in the presentation and kind of just ad hoc it on the way through. But you got it. You made it through. I was impressed. 
man, um, that just brings back some good memories of the first take on the world. I got invited up there by uh, by Chris, you know, and I yeah, I didn't know him before then. I forget exactly how we got connected, maybe through John Pounders. Yeah. And um, I went up there and my my presentation didn't work, so I had to wing the whole thing. And I was like, oh, man, this is just not working out. <laughs> but actually, I had so many people come up to me and just mention how much what I had to say uh, meant to them. And they said it was better that, that, that it didn't work out because I was able to say what, I, what they needed to hear. But, man, I, I'll tell you what. Uh, what a, I don't know. Just when you talk about being nostalgic, you know, and I think about Take on the World. Uh, the first year we were down right off of Royalton Road was that yeah that was the year that I met you I remember that and then uh, then we were up by the lake a couple years uh, mm -hmm. shut down for a year and then we got to we got to go down here um, south real close to where I live last time and um, yeah and I just uh, man it's just you know when we get together it's family yeah we also got to speak together at Mike Spalding's yes um, conference as well. Uh, so we got to hang out now a few times. But before that, I was just a guy chatting in the in the early days of Through the Black on YouTube as one of the chatters there. Uh, I had on as a guest not long ago your old uh, co-host, uh, Jared Cressman. Uh, I don't Jared. know if you got I, – I yeah, That name you, rings a bell. Yeah. I don't know if you got to saw, see that. Um I know you, you're you're like me. Time is limited, but if you find our channel, uh, take on the world channel on uh, YouTube here, Tom, and go back and look at the Jared Christman show. If nothing else, just to watch the intro, I'm telling you, it's a top top notch stuff of me talking with Jared. I'm glad you said that. I will go check it out now. Usually, when I see him, it triggers me. So. <laughs> 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 yes, yes, he triggers me. Yeah. But Tom, it was it's been since February 3rd of 2020 since you were last my guest on the the channel. Um when you spoke then, um we were talking about and get this, this was the topic that I chose to interview you about is life defining moments. Um times in our lives that have been the most formative. And we, we didn't know then how much, and we were talking about just this before we came on the air, how much would change and has changed from 2020 to 2022. You and I have both in, in our community have experienced a significant loss uh, in ministry um personal personal loss uh shelly and russ Dizdar for for yourself and of course rob for wow, yeah. him uh i i didn't know russ as well i'd only met him one time in person uh but rob I, i'm i'm never going to get over the loss of rob uh until we see him again uh because the man spoke into my life right he spoke into my life just as Russ spoke into your life and he will never leave. And that, that absence is never not going to be noticed for you. So Tom, I'm asking the real questions tonight as I both think about the past and reminisce is what has Tom, what does Tom, the ministry of Christ through Tom Dunn, um, how has it changed for you? And uh, what kind of thoughts going forward from that time um, were you having now moving forward in ministry, having Russ's uh, uh, input and always being ready at the phone, not being there? What 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 is uh, what does that mean for Tom Dunn and through the black? Um, uh, there's a lot there. 2019, uh, I came out of 2019 
it was our most successful year in ministry ever since we had started. I was, uh, I can't tell you how many times I was flying out to places, speaking at conferences. Um, and just, I felt like I had really just, um, hit my prime that year. I found that sweet spot. You know what I'm saying? Where I was comfortable on stage and I'm not trying to be boastful, but like I was just, it felt good. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, um, came in 2020 beginning of a new year, beginning of a new decade. And we had so many plans uh, to go even and, and be at more places and to do more ministry and to go places that were what we call kind of like creative access. We were going to take our uh, ministry team to places like a uh, true a true crime conference. We wanted to go to conferences that weren't necessarily Christian mm. and go there and talk to people that had an interest in true crime and introduce, you know, things like satanic ritual abuse to them. We were going to go to Christian conferences and witness to all of these liberal Christians, you know, uh, actually uh, Christian music festivals, things like this. We're going to take our team out and train them and, and we're going to go into the pride festivals and, and do again, some created a, uh, access. So when everything got shut down, I felt like I got punched in the gut or knocked off my horse. And I was like, okay, no, no. I just kept, I was in denial. And I, I'm embarrassed to say this. I was in denial for way too long. And I kept saying, okay, nope, they're going to, they're going to open this back up. This can't be, this can't be. We, we had a great year last year. We're going to have a better year this year. And it never happened. It never happened. And, um, of course, you know, the summer of 2020, we had all these virtual conferences, these virtual talks, and it just wasn't the same. And we were kind of getting, you know, we, we were understanding that things were not going to be the same and that everything, Chad, that we have been warning people about for so long was actually coming true. I was the one, you and I were the ones telling people. And then for me, speaking for myself here, when it was actually happening, I was in denial about it. <laughs> and I was like, no, no, I was just like, I, I, you know, looking back on it, I feel like I was a little child, you know, not getting, not getting his way. And I'm like, uh, no, I, I want to go to take on the world. I want to go to the, go there for, it. we're not going to shut these conferences down. You know, I wanted to will them into existence, but that didn't work. Um, and I'm just, you know, from a personal place here, I uh, I will I really withdrew, and I was like, you know what, I'm I, I didn't go anywhere, you know. Um, and when they began to open things back up, I was like, I'm not going to wear a mask. I'm not going to take a jab. I'm not going to do these things. And they're shutting down my travel. And then we lost, um, you know the price uh let me just share this chad i i was at the i was at the go there for i'm sorry i was at the take on the world and i got uh i, I was so looking forward for a chance to talk to uh rob skiba and when you're a speaker sometimes you don't have a chance to talk you know what i mean mm -hmm. because we're we're busy getting ready or we're talking or we're ministering and sometimes we got to stay up real late at night to be able to, you know, to talk. And when everything was shut down and everybody left, uh, Rob Skeeb and I just kind of gravitated towards each other and uh, gave each other a hug and um, and uh, just began to talk to each other. Some other personal stuff that I won't share between Rob and I that was just, you know, him and I and and. Um, his his mostly you know his support of me and him him showing his support of me um and i actually in my presentation i put a slide in the presentation just for rob hoping that he would see it in there it was hmm. a star trek uh slide <laughs> and i almost took it out but then i was like you know what i'm gonna leave that in there just in case rob i never expected rob to be sitting in on my talk you know but he was and he saw it and he mentioned it to me but I felt like when we left, Rob and I left it as a to be continued. We're like, okay, we got to talk more here. Um, 
we were we were talking about the current events and we were talking about some political things it was kind of interesting because i asked rob about how he had changed some of his politics in the last couple of years you know and he was you know he was just kind of saying you know i was him talking about himself he felt like he was um uh, you know, he was wrong on some things and now he sees where, you know, he thinks this was a good, you know, decision and, and, you know, him sharing some personal stuff with me. Anyway, we left that night and I just, I could have stayed up all night talking to Rob Skiba. And the next day it left such an impression on me, Chad, that I thought about Rob Skiba most of the day, the next day, which was a Monday. Just because we had such a warm connection, um, I I knew Rob before anybody knew Rob. Just because he had come to one of my conferences years ago, and we kind of connected back then, and then we spoke at another conference in Chicago, and I just I had that connection with him that had nothing to do with any of his teaching. I always thought his teaching was fascinating. I didn't agree. You know, him and I weren't on the same page, you know, with a lot of stuff and same him with me and I with him. But we had that, you know, friendship. And when it was it was not long after that, I heard that Rob was sick. And then my heart sank when I found out that he went into the hospital. And just because we know we were seeing what was going on specifically with uh, some people in his condition that were going in and we were, we were all really concerned. And of course I was fast forward. Um, I found out, I think it was a Wednesday morning. Russ Dizdar was sick. I was scrambling to get him some medicine. I'm, I got a call from Chris and he said, pray for, pray for Rob. And I was on my way to get, take medicine to Russ. I, I went in, Chad. I, I drove from um, from Mount Vernon, Ohio. I, I had to drive down, uh, you know, 40 minutes south. And I had to go all the way back up over an hour east and give this medicine to Russ. And I saw him in his kitchen. I gave it to him. He took some. And... I got the message that while I was there at Russ's house, that Rob had passed. And I told Russ and Russ, Russ was visibly, he was just taken aback and he, he couldn't believe it. And we were telling Russ, Russ, d don't go to the hospital. We don't think you should go to the hospital. I saw him that night. I left his house thinking, Russ is going to get better. He's going to get better. Um, we gave him some stuff, you know, that's going to help him. I checked in with him the next day. I talked to him on the phone the next day, and that was the last I heard of him. Well, I got a text, I think, the following day, but then that was the last that we heard. And people are still mourning the loss of Rob. And then I find out, I couldn't believe it. I, I did an emergency show on Sunday night asking for prayer for Russ Dizdar. Probably, Chad, he was probably already gone when I did that, that show. And it's, anybody can go back and watch it. We didn't know. But we were putting two and two together. Nobody had heard from him. And we just did an emergency prayer and a broadcast. Then I found out that night that he was gone. And I immediately left my house and went on a walk. And of course, I was in the denial phase. And I walked around my neighborhood and I thought maybe if I walk around my neighborhood and come back, everything will be okay. I, um, I waited and I waited and I waited. And then I finally called my wife into the bedroom and told her what happened. I couldn't believe it. I drove that night to Russ's house. Chad, I that night, I didn't cry because I was in shock. 
and I went all the way to his house. I was probably there outside. It was in October. It was kind of cold. We were standing outside his house praying. And his his wife, Shelly, of course, was taken to the hospital. She was initiated because she couldn't keep any food down. I drove home that night. I woke up the next morning and then it all hit me. And then I've got this crazy post. We were trying to keep we were trying to keep it secret, but somebody let the secret out and it, it got out in, a, in a, just a few minutes. But we just passed the six month anniversary of that time which was, I believe, October 18th. And we pass it on just a couple days before my birthday. Um, April 18th was six months since we lost Russ. My faith is strong. But in my humanness, I don't know. I don't know what, you know what I'm saying? I, I, um, I, 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 it just doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right that Russ is not here. And I trust God and, and I know he knows what he's doing. But it doesn't doesn't seem right right that Russ is not here and that Rob's not here. You know, <clears throat> I asked you th your thoughts because it helps me put mine in order, uh, Tom. You know, not only is the loss there there's automatically um because we're not just simply brothers but we you know we 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 shared together uh you know um we were we do the same we do the same stuff right maybe not the same topics but we do the same stuff right uh ministering to the body at large or whatever and I um, felt and have still feel the the need, the pull, the if you want to put a biblical term, the leading of the Father to step up and to not replace them, but fill their shoes, right? To, right. to carry on ministry and be a face uh, for our community um, for people to rally around, right? So that people, uh, to help, because there are faces in ministry that we look up to. It's like, you know, when you see that face, there's going to be a crowd, right? Uh, the, when I when I see Tom Dunn, I know that people who know Tom Dunn, he's, he's going to be, he's going to be able to hold an audience, I know that there are going to be people who want to speak to him and people are not going to walk away if Tom Dunn's standing there, right? If, if they see Tom Dunn, they're going to have courage. Um, Rob Skiba was that way for me. I see them, I saw him and okay, I can have courage because I know that brother is not going to give up. <laughs> He's not giving up. So I'm not going to give up. And now that they're not here and by default filling those roles um it's like i think tom how did they do it <laughs> you know what thoughts went through their head because you think about someone like russ who who truly was a a unique man none like him on the face of the earth who spearheaded uh, the ministry he was in uh, head first in boldness for many years, when nobody had a clue who he was or even cared, uh, this man was doing the hard work and uh, preaching Christ and freeing people from bondage uh, and ministering. And you think, how did those guys do it? How am I going to do it? <laughs> what you said, you know, when just like you said, you know, 2019, you feel like you're kicking off and. I got to say, I knew that I would be taking a break the next year, but I felt pretty much the same way as you did. I share those sentiments, Tom. Uh, by 2019, I had two years of speaking in the conferences. I was feeling pretty comfortable, you know, 
speaking uh, at Mike Spalding's conference in Ohio, uh, Chris has said, Chris even said, he says, I've, I've seen your presentation many times now. He says, that presentation you gave in Ohio, despite the fact that there was a technical difficulty with yours at the beginning uh, for the sound not coming through, he says, that was the best time, best presentation you ever gave. <laughs> so that was, it was fantastic. It was phenomenal. And it's like, and it felt good. And then, like you said, it comes around. It's like, this is now you get shut down. You get slowed down there. Even though I knew I was taking a break, I didn't do, but maybe a handful of shows uh, on the disputed lands myself uh, on this channel that whole year. And then we get the conference and then you get the chair kicked out from underneath you. Um, and uh, I've, I know that for me that that's why I'm taking stock and I'm going down this trip of nostalgia lane. The first thing people know or everybody knows about me, I, I, I love and cherish and I value above all things uh, apart from my family is my friendships. Uh, without my friendships, uh, I'm, you know, I, I care nothing for anything else that is, that I can have really uh, as a possession in this world. And so when I have friends like Tom Dunn, you know, it just, it just reinforced that those things are valuable. The conversations you have are meaningful. They, they, the conversations that seemingly are about nothing are the things that I end up remembering for years out of everything that I forget and can't remember <laughs> as I get older. I remember stupid stuff like exactly where we were, where we prayed, and what I prayed for you before I went on stage. I can't remember what I had for lunch Wednesday last week, you know, but I can remember that. So, well, Chad, you know, uh, just bringing that up, I remember um, I was uh, I was really concerned about what I was going to speak on that night, and I had a bunch of different options. I had just spoken yeah. the day before, yeah, and I really needed to settle my mind and. The reason I went to you, because I knew I could count on you to pray for me. I knew that you loved me and that you would pray for me. And uh, we went, we stepped aside outside. And, and uh, I, you know, after that, I was able to focus and to figure out exactly what it was I needed to uh, to speak on. And uh, it was clear. And I was, I, I went in and I actually changed a bunch of my slides to make it fit the new direction, you know. So, um, so, yeah, so what I'm saying is, Tom, is, uh, you know, for you now that you, I mean, it's through the black, right? It's through the black. This is what people, uh, came to knew, know you for. It was not a subsidiary, but it worked hand in hand with the ministry of Russ Dizdar, your mentor, uh, and teacher in the ministry you do. How has ministry for you, or if it has changed uh, for you, can you share, I guess, yeah. since then, what what ministry for you has been like? What has, if anything, has changed for you? What do you, has your approach changed to how you're doing this? T so your view. A couple different things. Yeah, that was the original question, and we went down a rabbit trail. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I did. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> you know. I feel so, the, the, there's so many different um, areas of loss without Russ in my life. And of course, the number one was the friendship, the accountability, the mentor, you know, all of these things, him praying for me and us and all that. Um, but also the loss of everything that he knew. Mm. And the man, the man couldn't remember some basic everyday things. Okay. And his <laughs> wife would joke about these things. Like, uh, he was using all of his brain power to store scripture and to <laughs> store information about cases and to store knowledge about, 
uh, you know, uh, uh, multiple personality and just all of these things. So he was a walking encyclopedia when it came to that stuff. And one of the things I've been doing is I've been trying to go back and learn some of the foundational things that Russ used to teach. So I've been reading uh, some books about things like, well, one book's called Operation Paperclip. Mm -hmm. uh, I just finished up a book last week called The Control of Candy Jones, which came out in 1978, which was about a, a model who was used in um, in uh, mind control uh, courier for the CIA. Um, and I've been trying to go back and, you know, get that foundation that that Russ had. I'll never be able to get all the knowledge that he had, but I want to be able to to understand where he was coming from. You know, I can't just call him up anymore and ask him a question. I I got to go and find it myself. So the ministry has not changed in the way that the priority is salvation, preaching Jesus Christ, him crucified, uh, you know, that um that we're sinners and we need a savior. OK, that hasn't changed. Um, I. I look at all of the turmoil that many of us have been through over the last few years, and I would be lying if I said that I didn't catch myself trying to play it safe. OK, what I mean by that is. I'm. I, I'm trying to be a um, a good steward of what God has given me, my resources, my life, okay? Um, and I'm trying to make sure that I'm not neglecting my family. My my son, my youngest son is at a, um, he's at a very different age right now, and <laughs> he has different needs from me now, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, he's, he just turned 15 in January and, uh, you know, I mean, he, it's, he needs different attention from me than he did a few years ago. So I have to adjust to that. Uh, the cool thing is he's really interested in a lot of things that I talk about and do so I can talk about those things and teach them to him. And I'm learning a lot of things from him as well. Uh, my son, uh, my, my youngest son, Gavin was actually going with me when I would go with Russ, he was getting to that age mm. and we would go out on cases. And just last summer, we were out all night long. My son was with me on a case with Russ Dizdar, one of his adventures. So anyway, um, there's some personal things that have changed and I, Chad, I don't want to, I, I don't like to say no when it when somebody asked me to speak somewhere, but I actually turned down a conference a couple months ago just because I have to consider security in a different way now uh, for my family. And um, I got to be careful traveling too far. Uh, I know, you know, that the, the Lord will take care of us and watch over us, okay? Uh, but I have to be wise. I have to be a good steward of what he's doing for me. We plan on doing the same thing and doing more, uh, more of what we've done, you know, more than ever exposure, gospel, uh, equipping the saints, equipping, you know, uh, the body of Christ, teaching them spiritual warfare, seeing the captive set free. We just went to a conference in Dallas, Texas, and uh, our team was down there. And they executed with excellence. Um, and I see some of the friends here in uh, in the chat. So we were we were down there and we ministered. I don't know how to how many people, uh, you know, a few dozen people, where we saw people set free of things that had chains they've had their whole lives. Okay. Um, so we want to continue doing that, but I got to make sure that family is our priority, and. Um, and uh, just we want to be efficient. I want to find a way to do more with less. OK, um, a, a lot of the things we um, you know, when we started out two years ago, we had planned on uh, doing some things we hadn't done before, some campaigns. And we gave out 100 shirts, you know, 100 free shirts. 
and we were just kind of blasting out 2020 and we got all of these people signed up to help us mail these postcards out and all these things. We're going to continue to do some of the same things, but we want to be more efficient and a good steward of what we're doing. So uh, I'm trying to find a way to do training. Uh, we want to do training, Chad, not only in spiritual warfare, but I want to find a way to offer training for people that want to do film. Because we need more people to be able to do what you do, to do what I do, and to do broadcasting, um, you know, whatever it may be, to do uh, podcasting, to do video stuff. And there are people that are willing, but they're either um, hesitant or they just don't know how. So I would like to see some training you know, of that because a camera can be a weapon in this day and age. And, you know, also we got to consider um, – just being able to take care of ourselves uh, concerning things like health in case we're ever shut down and they say, Hey, you can't come to this hospital or you can't see this doctor that's already happening in Canada. And of course, you know, it's happening here in the United States, but um, they, they are shutting us down because we won't wear a mask or something like that. And we're, we're seeing all kinds of crazy stuff and it's affecting believers. Okay. Um, I'm thankful for a lot of things because it's exposing a lot of the the false teachers and stuff like that. But um, we, we just want to teach people, you know, uh, how to survive, you know, spiritually speaking and physically speaking. So, you know, when we lost Russ, my only goal for six months was to stay alive. I thought I'm going to go. I was concerned. I was concerned. Not only we, we, there were many, yeah, of not them. only lost Russ. But we had other people in the hospital. Other people were getting sick. Tom Horn got real sick. Yes. Okay. Uh, there's a list of other people that we lost. Some of them I knew. Some of them I didn't know. Okay. Yes. And um, connected to this. So my goal was to, to, to at least live for six months. I thought, man, I got to try to make it six months because I knew that, uh, that I'm a target and I'm still a target and we all are. Yeah. So, but it's usually not the way that we're expecting. We <laughs> might expect a physical attack, like an assassination, but it's usually going to be a spiritual attack. Sorry. <laughs> my, my, uh, my prayer team, my immediate disputed lands prayer warriors did and still do uh, stay on me, uh, to check on my health and to make sure that I'm doing everything right. And I'm <laughs> taking my vitamins and everything because, uh, they had that same reaction. Tom, I don't know if this is too personal. If it is, you can tell me a uh, next question or let's move on. But uh, and no hard feelings, uh, especially even if it's on, uh, because we're doing this live. Mm -hmm. There were there was concern uh, from those that know exactly how um, your ministry and your ability to work full-time in ministry uh, came about, uh, there was concern from many people, and I'll just put it this way, that perhaps your ability to do full-time ministry would not be uh, available um, with Russ's passing. Is that concern valid? Is there... Uh, um, no, I was actually... Um... I was actually to go full time separate from Russ. So, um, and uh, it was uh, it was by a generous uh, donation from uh, from a good friend. And that was able to kickstart my going, you know what I'm saying, uh, going full time. So I'll share this um, real quick. And um, yeah, nobody likes talking about finances, but I try to be transparent, but I don't like you know, I mean, there's certain reasons. Yeah, that's, like why I'm, that's why I'm couching the question. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, but I'll, I'll just say this. I'm pretty transparent. 2019 was a great year. So um, we saved a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? I, when I say we, I mean mostly me because I'm pretty much the one that, that takes care of everything. But I, I saved a lot of money for the hard times. I didn't know there was going to be hard times. You know what I'm saying? But we were praying about how to use that and stuff. And there's a lot of things we want to do. There's a lot of things we could do if we had more funds. Mm -hmm. um, but things have been slow the last couple of years. And um, we're still doing fine. But I'm not, 
I wish I could be self-sufficient. I do count on people supporting me and, you know, things like that. And, and we try yeah. to come up with different ways. You know, um, we, we did so good in 2019 in sales. And when I say so good, um, to me, it's good. Other people will be like, oh, wow, that's not very much. But to <laughs> me, it blows me away, honestly. Yeah. I, you know, I'll say this is kind of funny, Chad, because <laughs> my, we went to this consultation last week for my daughter to go to college. Right. And this guy was going to help us like find all of this um, financial aid and all that stuff. And when we showed him our tax returns, he was like, oh, wow. It was like, uh, I'm going to be able to help you guys out a lot because you guys are <laughs> basically is what he said. And I thought I was a little bit offended. I was like, I don't feel like I'm poor. I feel like I'm a king, you know, but we, you know, my wife and I, uh, my wife is the breadwinner. And we really don't make a lot of money, but um, we we're good savers. You know what I'm saying? And um, we don't have a lot of debt. So that's one thing that that I think is, is real important. Uh, now, I have acquired a tiny bit of debt um, over the last couple of years, but nothing compared to the average American where they have you know, twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars of credit card debt. We don't have anything like that. Of course, we have a home, you know, but no, anyway, um, that's always a concern. I don't like that I run, that I have to have donations to run my ministry. I wish I was self-sufficient. Um, I just, I'm just not good at doing it. And Russ always tried to teach me that. And he was, he was good at it. And I learned from him, Chad, he never really asked. He just said, Hey, if anybody wants to support, support. So that's the way I do it. But I usually forget to say it. So well, don't forget to um, say it. If you can support, uh, I put it's been scrolling across the bottom here um, since the the show started tonight. Uh, two places, principally, that people can find you. Uh, the first being uh, realdarknews.com. This was a this is born out of their previous website, the the through the black one, really. Uh, where you can stay up to date on current articles that speak directly to the ministry that you're really involved with, uh, things um, to be aware of. You know, the the I call them the ten, the tenth page of the newspaper. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah they're mentioned, but they're not talked about. Uh, you're not going to hear them on the broadcast. Uh, uh, you know, but be, you know, if you're paying attention, you can see, you know, there's some strange things uh, afoot still today. But one of the things that I wrote a note about here on my interview tonight is that I needed to buy uh, myself and uh, uh, well, just myself, mainly maybe my kids too, some more um, through the black merch, but I'm not real sure where to do that, Tom. So guide me to where to buy well, your merch. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, <laughs> well, we, um, a little over a month ago, we launched a whole new um, clothing line called Ezekiel 8. And it's inspired by Ezekiel chapter 8. And uh, you can go to throughtheblack.com and click on the store there. And you can see all of our stuff. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, Okay. But so. uh, thanks for mentioning that, Chad. Uh, it's uh, we we have some uh, we have a new shirt called uh, it says uh, the gates of hell shall not prevail, and then um, we have one that says it is well with my soul, and probably another one coming out before summer. So, so if you go to throughtheblack.com right now, you'll see a banner that says Ezekiel Eight Apparel right there, and you can scroll down, and there's whole bunch of some of our previous uh, favorites um die cut stickers and the lapel pins the resist patches which by the way i don't know if you know this um pom but i have a harley i uh, that's my I, hey i saw you on that uh uh taking that out the other day yeah 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 so I, that's my getaway. Don't listen to Chris. He makes fun of it. Says it's a girl's bike because <laughs> it's high five red and it looks pink. So don't listen to Chris. 
tell me I'm riding a girl's bike. But anyway, the point is, again, I got your patch. I wish I had remembered to bring it up here. But on my leather vest that I wear, I got my through the black uh, patch right here in the back, you know, like oh, yeah. uh, the bikers do. That's where mine sits. So everybody who sees me riding says, sees the through the black uh, thing there. The mugs, but there's some new uh, apparel up here too. Um, this one that really grabs my eye right away is this one that is well with my soul. I really dig that. So I'm probably going to have to pick that one up or two or three or four. Um, Here's the everything done in the dark. I have, the, I have it right here. In the light. Yes, this one. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, the other one uh, that you have right there sitting underneath that one is uh, everything done in the dark. And this is directly quoting the Ezekiel 8 uh, verses, uh, you know, will be brought to the light. Uh, that one go. also very cool. One I can see myself uh, wearing when I'm riding my Harley. Um, very nice. Oh, yeah. Here's also the other comes one. In the sweatshirt. That's the other one up here. Um, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Wow! Um, I should hire you just to work for me, man, because you you help me promote better than I do myself. Well, so. I'm I'm going to be picking up uh, some of these shirts. I'll pick I'll pick up a few couple probably for my wife and uh, uh, for myself because she loves uh, she got the resist the the iconic really resist um that one really i think is just you blew it out of the you knock it out of the ballpark with the resist shirt i personally don't think you're ever going to do any better on a design than you did with that one ever so you peaked i'm sorry <laughs> about that um uh, but Thank you for that one. You know, I um, I wore, I was, uh, I usually wear like a, a shirt to the gym that's kind of like a sweat wicking shirt, you know, mm -hmm. that's made of like a silky material. But I decided to wear my resist shirt last week. I was like, I don't know why. I was like, I'm going to wear this resist shirt. I want everybody to see this at the gym. The first guy I met at the gym was wearing a shirt that said 666. And he, he just kind of looked at me and I looked at him, you know. And, <laughs> and, then we just started talking to each other and we were friendly with each other and stuff, you know, but there was an awkward minute there where we were like, Oh, okay. Uh, but dude, in my town, there's so many Satanists and they love wearing that. their apparel out. So I want to make sure that I let them know that they're not cool. <laughs> You're going to take 12 paces. We're going to turn around and draw. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm Big enough. This town ain't big enough for the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but I'm going to pick these prices really are pretty good. Um, on the tees, they're, they're, man, you're not going to pick up tees anywhere for that price uh, today. And the hoodies yeah. are very reasonable. Uh, I'm a hoodie kind of person. I'm wearing one now. I wear hoodies all the time. I have relatives that ask, is that all you own are hoodies? Uh, when I'm casually I mean, by myself. I've got so going. many. You know, these shirts, if I could say so myself, I love wearing them because they're so soft. Like, they're not lawn mowing t-shirts. They're really made of really good material. They cost us a little bit extra to make these, but we don't care. We want, because if, when you have a quality shirt, somebody's going to wear it, you know? And, um, I have some that are, you know, a few years old, made of the same material, and they're still really, really soft. So, yeah. So I'm pick these up. Uh, be sure to visit. Scrolling on the screen now through the black.com. Click on the Ezekiel Eight banner, and pick you up some of these. Um, Tom will personally wear them and then uh, ship them to you without showering. No, 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 he won't. No, he won't. No, no, he, won't. I he did good. You're going to kill the sale, Chad. <laughs> I will personally I pack it for you. But I won't, yeah. I'm not I'm just, that I'm just gross. Kidding. He's uh, not yeah, going to wear it a lot right there. He's not wearing But I do got a question um, for you. Uh, do you, are, are you, um, now that the people have, you know, we've got two years now since the uh, the stuff, 
and um, people are starting to try to get back to doing things. Uh, you say you turned down a conference, um, you know, for whatever reasons, um, you know, the personal reasons for, that you mentioned. Um, are you still getting people, are people still reaching out to you uh, for ministry? Has that changed any? Um, you know, kind of people have, have the needs that people have uh, changed that are reaching out to you pre and post. Um, I have an amazing team that does an amazing job of helping me out. So they've taken a lot of the burden off of me. I still, you know, uh, minister to people, pray with them, do freedom encounters over the phone, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but my team is getting trained and we just met with uh, several of them down in Dallas and they showed up there and it was amazing. They got some, you know, just boots on the ground experience. But um, yeah, we still do that. It, it, it depends. Like, um, if I'm really busy and if I got something going on, then that's when everybody calls, you know, <laughs> but that's when uh, I when, like you. somebody needs something like right now, like I've got to talk to Tom Dunn right now, you know, uh -huh. um, but Hey, we're not complaining. Um, usually it's, uh, it's something, you know, I mean, that's what we're trained to do. This, we, we know how to do this. So, uh, I love Chad when somebody calls me up and they begin talking and I can almost finish their sentences because we've heard it so many times and not making light of the person's, you know, personal emergency. Um, they think they're the only ones, but I love it when I can say, Hey, you're not the only one. And we've known many people that have gone through this and there is help. There's hope. There's victory. There is broken chains. There is freedom from the jail. You can get set free. So, um, let me show you how to do that. Patricia, I'm not, I'm not shopping. I, I did stop and I started paying attention to Tom again, but when I was shopping for his, uh, uh merchandise, I accidentally closed. I keep the YouTube, uh, live stream over here on my other computer going, uh, because it's so much easier for my eyes to read. Cause I have it on the black mode over here to make sure everything's coming through from the stream over there to what everybody's seeing over here. And I lost that. So I wasn't shopping. I was getting that pulled back up because I closed it like an idiot. Um, so thanks for calling me out on being an idiot uh, on uh, the live show. Thank, I appreciate that. Uh, keeps me humble. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I mean, but that is exactly what happened. Um, you know, Tom, I guess I got a, question um for you i can ask you this and maybe uh, i don't know where it is you talked about you were doing that training russ has his courses which are still available i'm, I'm sure that people can go to his website and and do those courses um have you ever considered um or is it probably just a time thing i would guess um doing those courses uh, yourself uh, with your experience and what you've learned um, and, and doing the training courses and, and doing them with Tom Dunn, or do you just still point people to Russ's stuff? Um, we still point people to Russ's stuff. We definitely have some stuff that we would like to do kind of in our flavor. Mm -hmm. Russ was an amazing teacher and the infrastructure is there. So, for us, it's wise just to point people there and say, hey, if you want to learn this, like when I'm talking to somebody and we get done with a um, with a, a freedom encounter, mm -hmm. I usually say, hey, if I were you, I would go take this course. This is going to help you. You're going to come out of this course with confidence. You're going to come out of this course knowing how to help other people and help yourself. You know, uh, it's there. Russ is good at it. I can do a lot of it. Um, but I don't want to redid what he did. And I know that's not what you're mentioning, but we're thinking about doing some stuff, putting our own flavor on it. Mm -hmm. And then also one of the things we want to do, if we, if we could get, you know, if we could get the manpower, I just wish I had people in my city, you know, mm -hmm. one of the problems, Chad is I used to be behind the camera Yeah, and now I'm in front of the camera. Well, 
I can't be in front of the camera and run the camera at the same time. That's hard to do. Hmm. So, um, yeah, that, yeah no, I can, I can see why well that, I mean, the camera, I mean, you could probably try, but I'm pretty sure the camera would be out of focus and hitting the ground by the time you ran around to the other side. So I can well, see the logistical problems with that, but you know, they got these new things, Tom called stands. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you've seen these. It's a tripod. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Tripods. I got to yeah, get one of those. Screw them in and they, I'm telling you, it's, it's crazy. These things will hold themselves. So let me clarify <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> I'm talking about somebody being active oh, behind the camera, right. directing, making a movie. Right. Like right. I'm finding <laughs> that now I have some things like some film type stuff that I want to be in, mm. you know, to tell a story. Mm -hmm. um, but it's hard to make a movie when you're in the movie. Yeah, no, I when get you're it. the only one. Okay, no, I get it. So, um, but no, I I do know about tripods. Okay, good, okay. good, good. I wasn't sure. I know you're a filmmaker and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, Sometimes, no, but thanks for reminding me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I, the the other thing is um, one of the things I'll. I mean, I can just share it here. I, maybe I can even get some feedback um, from. I, I pretty much know that that my my prayer team. They anything I tell them that I'm on my heart to do, they're with me on that. But um, I would love to see film. There are people who read books. You and I are read book. There are book readers. But you and I both know that there are people out there who never pick up a book they never will pick up a book that's just not the way they learn they they don't read books um they may listen to somebody but i would i have considered and thought about putting my book into a documentary and making it into a video so that the book is told in a documentary who i i have two people i know who do films you and David Hevner. I know that you and David Hevner have booked their, what they're doing for the next three years. <laughs> so maybe I could get some. Uh, you're saying you you need people like that too. So maybe you're not the right person to ask. Uh, maybe you're telling me, Chad. Uh, good luck. I need them too. Um, <laughs> well, um, I would love to, that's I would one love of the things I was mentioning earlier, Chad. Is we want to teach people how to do that. Yeah. So I would love to teach people how to how to do film and to edit film. Like if if, if I could have a conference or if at one of our conferences we had a breakout session like that and I had the equipment there, just to kind of even pique people's interest and say you can do this. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Of course, we lost Rob. Rob was a filmmaker too. Yes. And um, so we we need there are people out there that are willing, but they're intimidated by it or they don't think they can do it. Um, and they would be surprised, you know, that once they caught on to it, how much they would like it and how good they would be so, at it. So you're saying I could learn to do this? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and you, you can learn and you, and really you're gonna, and you're gonna you train can learn anything on personally? YouTube. You're gonna train me personally. You're gonna you're gonna do that. To... Well, I will send you the link. <laughs> <laughs> so but we could do a crash course. And if you had any questions, yeah, you could, I, I would, I would uh, love to let you know, Jared okay. was working on some stuff and he was bugging me all the time. So what's another person? <laughs> well, the difference is I'm a friend. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is a difference. The, that Jared guy, you know, he's just, Hey, he's you know, I see him. a lot of names on here um, that I just want to give a shout out to. Uh, I saw uh, Jason Windsor a minute ago. I don't know if he's still on here. Um, just uh, some of these names I don't recognize. I think they're under. Um, Ian, Ian Chadwick is was in the chat. He's a name uh, you'd recognize. Patricia is in the yeah, chat. Yeah, I see and her. And um, there, there's several. My good friend uh, Bowman. I just saw him down yeah. in um, in Dallas. 
Yeah, so, so many of these people you would recognize. You probably don't like Karen. You would recognize her face. Yes, Victoria. Uh, yeah, yeah, you would recognize a lot of these people, Tom. So, if not all of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I do, and some of them I do recognize, and then some of them I haven't seen for a while. Uh, Rosalind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, she was in your chat. Yep, she was always in the YouTube chat on Facebook. Yep. So uh, that reminds me, it was friends. scrolling scrolling earlier. I'll put that back up here. Um, guys, uh, uh, the numbers, we need to get the numbers back to where they were on the Rumble format. They did, Through the Black didn't stop happening. Uh, Tom is still doing Through the Black shows. They're, maybe they're not uh, every week um, like they were before, but I know he tries to be consistent in getting those out uh, on a regular basis every month, uh, you know, two or three shows a month, every at, at least that he's doing over there. So, yeah, you let, find me, him on hey, let, me, let me jump in right there. Let me tell you, we've been doing Tuesday and Wednesday night at 11 p.m. Eastern. Um, and we were doing them in the morning, but we switched to night. And I have Vicky Joy on with me every Tuesday and Wednesday night. And we we have such a good time. We don't know if anybody else is having a good time. <laughs> her, her and I, we have a blast. And uh, our favorite thing, Chad, is we have this segment at the end of the show on Wednesday night where we both grab these pictures and we try to find something kind of strange and then put them up there for each other to react to. <laughs> like we, we put them into the, um, you know, uh, uh, our producer puts them up there and there are a lot of nostalgic things, you know, yeah. like uh, just like old TV shows or something yeah. like that. And we try to see what the reaction is. So nice. So what I'm saying is you guys need to go over uh, to rumble.com slash C slash through the black, um, get your rumble app on your phone. Uh, that's what I did. That's what's easiest for me to do. Uh, I sit in front of the computer 10 hours per shift to do my job. So, uh, and, and to do disputed lands, I do not want to sit in front of my computer any more than that, uh, unless I'm there with a purpose. Uh, so I like having through the black on my rumble app where I can take that with me anywhere I'm going and, uh, watch it on the go. Uh, I can watch uh, through the black while I'm driving. <laughs> just we don't recommend. I'm just seeing if anybody's paying attention, Tom. Just seeing if anybody's paying attention. <clears throat> anyway, on the go. Uh, so do that, and uh, you can and you can say I was mentioning. Uh, you know, you're talking about things coming together and ministry coming together. I have to say, Tom, I have never seen you look more dapper. Than you do right now with your hair and your beard and everything matching in perfect length. It's like this is a filter. You this is a filter. Good. Yeah. You look good right now. I mean, it's just, you know, sometimes I'm not saying it was bad. I'm just saying the hair wasn't always the same. <laughs> don't you, yeah. Don't you love that? Hey, you look good now, but that's <laughs> another way of saying, man, cut. you were looking rough last time it I saw you. It always look like it was <laughs> cut by the same barber in the same day yeah, like yeah. you know you were at the barber you got called away and then you went back a few days later to finish the cut i'm just saying <laughs> and it wasn't the same guy who was working on you the few, few days well, prior to that if you <laughs> if you donate to through the black you will not have to worry about spending the money on a haircut there you go help tom be able to go to the barber and stay <laughs> for the whole the whole haircut and not be told uh, he only paid for 15 minutes and he needs to get out of the chair. <laughs> so yeah, we want Tom to be able to stay and get the whole haircut, go, uh, go there and do that. Um, one of the other things I was going to mention is that, uh, you know, your documentaries and influential always people who spurred me forward to continue doing what I'm doing. Um, I'm hoping Tom, just so you know what I'm up to, we've been, that's been, prying uh, into your soul and exposing you here on everything. One of the things that I'm hoping that I can do is that at the end of doing my series where I'm going through 
my book is I'm going to take the time to actually do a second edition. Um, what that means is it's going to be revised in that it's not going to have the, the big concordance and all that at the end of it. All it will have, it's going to be stripped down to all it will have are uh, the references at the end of each chapter um, for anything that I'm quoting or referring to in that chapter. Some of the wording is going to be simplified. Uh, I think they're, I'm probably going to even have a chapter or something. I'm going to, it's going to be really reduced, uh, new cover and republished uh, as a second edition. Um, I need to work on that after I get through the series. But um, yeah, that's what I'm going to be about. And then, and then maybe I can start uh, asking you about that link and thinking about um, doing the book once I have the second edition uh, out and about um, doing it as a documentary at that time. So that's what I'm going to be about next week. Next week, I'm, I'm going to be shipping people's books out tomorrow. Um, I want to remind people that they can go to my website. Uh, I should have this in the banner, but I don't. I just put it in the chat. Um, you can go to my website, go to the store right now. It's on sale. You get the soft cover uh, from me directly uh, for $15. And normally they're $20. Um, so with shipping, it's just under, it's like 18 and a half. What? What did I miss, Karen? Oh, don't drive and watch. I know that. What did I miss? Okay, don't won't ask it. It was worth a shot. Don't, what? What? What's the rumble link again? It's on, it's on, it's on the screen. What? What are you talking about? What did it? Shall I? Yes, Karen. I, I know that there's typos in there. I've had more than enough people uh, tell me uh, they want to edit my book for me. Um, you're like, the, get in line. I got 20 of you guys lined up. You can just pass it through each other um, before we ever put it on the shelf. So, yes, uh, we will make sure that that happens. What is it about, Tom? Uh, Chris is asking me something great. We want to book Tom for an episode of Sound Off. Ask him. What if I don't want to ask him if he wants to oh, come on so to Sound Off? I yeah, I'm a big fan of that new uh, Take on the World show, Sound Off. Uh, I have not been able to watch a whole episode, but when I start watching, I, I watch it for quite a while. So yeah, I would. Uh, I think that show is really cool. I would love to be on there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tom was uh, big into the Christian music scene uh, growing up. Um, he was there, man. If Christian festival going on within uh, 200 square miles of Tom Dunn, you can guarantee he was there at it. Um, so awesome. So I'm, I'm going to have Chris uh, send you a text here when we end the show. Tom, um, Tom so you guys can work out uh, coordinating when you can come on sound yeah. off. Um, look, we've been going an hour and 15 minutes, Tom. I hate to actually leave and talk. I, I don't feel like we, uh, really made any ground tonight, Chad. We're going to have to do this again. Maybe you could come over on my show and we could finish this up. You know, why don't we do that? Um, after we get off here, you can just, uh, we can just work out, uh, coming on and, uh, we'll go on through the black and we can continue our conversation. Yeah. I would, I would, I would love to do that. Um, any excuse to hang out with Tom, uh, my buddy would be fantastic. Um, basically there's ways to support Tom. Uh, Tom has stepped up to the plate. He's still doing ministry every day. Uh, I still text him randomly at least. A, I tried to do it about once a month. Uh, I don't talk to Tom month to month, but every month I like to send him a text saying, Hey, Tom, uh, thinking about you, love you, brother. Uh, have a great day. Um, so I still do that. I don't know if he sees him or not. Uh, I don't know how quickly he deletes him. 
or if he saves them and looks at them all night uh, and thinks, man, this is an awesome text I got today. I don't know what he does with them, honestly, but I have his number and we communicate. Uh, I communicate. And uh, Tom Dunn can still be communicated with. He's still doing ministry. Support him. Go to Real Dark News, book market. Go to his Rumble page, book market. Go Tomorrow to- night, Vicky Joy and I will be talking about selling your soul to the devil. Sorry to interrupt, Chad. Perfect. I just want to say I love you, brother. And I just appreciate you inviting me on this show tonight. Um, it's so cool to hang out. I just, I felt like, I felt so relaxed tonight that it's just like, ah, man, there's so much more to talk about. And the time just flew by. You know, I, I, we were talking before the show, my nostalgia mode. You, you said we didn't know how good we had it. We really didn't know how good we had it. Um, the days of through the black in the early, early days, hanging out in the chat, you know, uh, the conversations you and Jared would have, <clears throat> the topics that would get brought up, uh, the the things that would take us uh, down weird paths and completely off topic for what the show was supposed to be about. Um, you know, good, good times. That's what life is made of, right? The mm-hmm. conversations we have uh, spending with friends and uh those can't be stolen from us. Um, I like to remind people those times that you get with people, they, they, they can't be taken from you. Like, I mean, as much as people want to may want to do things to me or take from me, they can't take away our past. They can't take away the time we got to spend with each other. They can't take away the fact that we were able to have this conversation. And they hate that because they want to take everything, right? They want to take your life. And this is part of life. Go support him. I'm going to uh, buy some shirts um, from Tom Dunn's ministry. You guys do the same. Don't forget uh, this week, I've been reminding people, you talk about not being good at it. I'm trying to be better at it, uh, about asking for support. Our show, our platform, the use of this platform um, it's, it's, it's the biggest outside the conference. It's the biggest, the only expense, um, really that we directly ask people to support. If people want to support me, they can, um, they just need to reach out to me and do that. You can do that. Of course I can point you to it, but, um, first support, take on the world and support the, this platform so that we can continue to use it to share, uh, our ministry with you. Uh, you can send five bucks, ten bucks, whatever, uh, to that uh, address, email address on PayPal, and uh, annually it's about five hundred bucks. You know the costs always keep going up, uh, but uh, it's about five hundred bucks annually right now um, to pay for the streaming tool that we use to bring uh, this uh, this channel to everybody. Um, so you can do that. Go to Through the Black, uh, support him, go buy some shirts, um, pray for Tom. Uh, if you watched and know Tom at all, you know he is always uh, always asking you for prayer, to pray with him, to be about the business. Pray for Tom in the morning. Uh, put him on your list of people you must pray for. Uh, protection is family. And uh, that's about all I got to say about that. Um, I've loved having you on, Tom. Uh, I will uh, make sure you let me know when you want me to come on uh, your show, and I'll just make it happen. Um, I'll I'll come on Rumble, and it'll be the first time I've done a show on Rumble with anybody, so I'm pretty stoked that you mentioned that, bringing me on. Um, It'll be a new thing to, to be on that platform. And uh, I haven't been on Through the Black in a long, long time. It's going to be good. It'll be great. Love you guys. We'll see you next week. Next week, we will begin the study because I got my books. I'm shipping them out tomorrow. There's no reason except post office delays for you not to get your book. Uh, You can always catch up. We will be starting the study on my book next week. Love you guys. See you. Shalom. Get out of here. Disputed lands. Take on the world. Thanks, everybody. Monday night. Tom's done. 
Yep, all that. Get bright, get inside, get hungry, word of God, appetite. Everlasting water, never again thirsty. Two disputed lands take a journey. Get right, get inside, get hungry, word of God, appetite. Everlasting water, never again thirsty. Two disputed lands take a journey. Get right, get inside.